So if you have a table of data that you'd like to put into Logger Pro manually and graph the data and then use those analytical tools on that data, feel free to do that. It's, it's, it's not hard to do that. And it's very similar to using a spreadsheet. In fact, I would argue that you probably should use a spreadsheet in those situations and learn how to use the analytical tools in spreadsheets, especially with Microsoft Excel, which has some very good regression tools and other types of tools. Um, they tend not to have um, the inter integration and derivative tools, the calculus tools, though. So Logger Pro might have a slight advantage in that case. So the example I'm going to use here, um, we've got these ticker tape timers and we've got this device that and I have a slow-mo video this is running at 240 frames per second this thing sounds like a woodpecker going on here at a very uniform rate it actually taps this uh, carbon paper and through these two uh, hooks here you run a, a long thin piece of paper and as that paper gets pulled through it, it puts on a series of dots and essentially what you get out of it is a motion diagram one of the things you have to know up front, and let me turn off this crazy knocking, is how often that's knocking and is it at a uniform rate. Well, it turns out it's driven by the cyclic voltage and current coming through the lines out of your wall. And it turns out, if you know a little bit about electricity, um, that that's 60 hertz power. So this should be running at 1 60th of a second per tap. And you can actually take a little, little video like I did here and run it through Logger Pro video analysis and verify that, that it's a 1 60th of a second time frame between one of these dots and that's what we call 60 Hertz and I'll leave that up to you to try that little analysis out it doesn't in five minutes you can prove that alright stop your tapping so this is what the data looks like when you pull the tape through and right here and this on the left side is uh, the tape which is sitting there moving back and forth and over to the right side um, the 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 tape was the 20 gram mass was taped on the left side of this it we dropped it straight to the floor and then these are the series of dots and you can see them spacing out further and further and further and we took several dots um, and I just labeled all, I numbered all the dots and then I measured the distances with a ruler um, and you can turn that into a motion diagram. It is a motion diagram. You can turn those those data points into a data set if you know that each one of these dots is 1 60 of a second apart. In fact, I have that data already in Excel. I'm just going to flip over to that. So here's my Excel data sheet right here. And here's my time and position data. And I'm just going to uh, cut and paste this data. I've got 29 data points. A little bit more than I like to work with, but it's, it's not a bad number to work with. So I'm just going to cut that. I'm going to see if I can cut it and paste it right into Logger Pro. So here's just a blank Logger Pro um, sheet ready to go. Um, I do not have any sensors plugged in. If you did have sensors plugged in, it would set it up for whatever that sensor is, so you probably want to avoid that. So I had cut and paste so let me see if this cut and paste works there it is there's my data I just cut and paste it right in so I, I've got um, this column here is my time in seconds and the, the right column is my position in centimeters what I can do is rename all these things so that I have consistent names and so I'm just gonna put for this data set name I'm gonna put uh, I'll just call it ticker tape just to remind me what I was using for my collection methodology. And I'll put a comment in here. This is a 20 gram mass, and I'll put this in quotes, free fall. And the question is, is that really free fall? I can hit OK. Um, and then I can go in here, and I'm going to change the name. This is actually, um, the name of this is, is going to be time. The short name is T. my units are in seconds and you can actually um, if you didn't have these values already set up you can actually generate the values using these numbers I can go from 1 to whatever with an increment with the increment could be 1 divided by 60 and it'll automatically generate those numbers for you so easy way to autofill that column of data for you um, but I already have them calculated so I'll just leave that there done 
so there's that. Uh, oh, give me a degree mark here. The units are seconds. Seconds. Done. In the y, I'll, I'll change these as well. Actually, this, these are y values. So I, I can leave that as y, and I'll just put units down. Actually, I'm, I'm tracking this in centimeters. So I'm going to put that in centimeters. If you want, you can do another calculated column, and you can divide all these numbers by 100 and turn it into meters. Let me just do that real quick and show you how that's done, how easy it is to do calculations, just like you would use in an Excel spreadsheet. So I could actually data. I could do a new calculated column. And we're going to put Y. I'll just call this Y again. And I'll just call this Y. And the units are going to be in meters. I'm not sure if it'll let me use Y twice. We'll see if it gives us an error. And then what do I want to do? I'm going to take my variable. Um, yeah, I better call this something else. Let's call this Y. M for Y in meters. So I'm going to take my Y value and I'm going to divide by 100. Done. All right, and there's Y in meters. Okay, so um, now I can I can start graphing things. I can do let's see, insert a graph. And here's my position versus time. It automatically, for some reason, it's just assuming that I, I wanted this last value done. But you could actually go in, if you didn't like this, I can click into my graph options, or I could just double, just click on this title. And I can actually choose what variables I would like to plot. Um, sort of axis options. I could plot centimeters versus time, or meters versus time. It, you can select there. Now, let's say I would like to plot and actually, in this back in the background here, it's already plotting your y in centimeters for some time. I don't really need this graph. I'm going to delete that one. Get rid of that. Now, what if I wanted velocity? How do you get velocity out of this? Well, take a derivative. And how does this shape look? Does this look like it's a quadratic function? Yeah, we got a curve going up here. I think something unusual is happening up at the end here, but we'll see in a second here. So I'm going to insert. Actually, I'm going to do another calculated column. I need some data to plot. So I want to plot velocity data. So I'm going to go in uh, in uh, data, a new calculated column. And I want to take the derivative of this column. So I'm going to take functions, calculus. I'm going to take the derivative. Take the derivative of what, what variable of my um, y in meters. And it should do it with respect to time cross our fingers. You know, if it doesn't, well you should be able to recognize that and fix it. And so this is V this is VY. Well, the short name for that is VY. And our units are meters per second. And what data set do I want to put this in? Make sure these are all under the same data set. If you put it all under the same data set, it should recognize when you're taking a derivative that it's going to use a time that's nested under this data set. If you have these things listed under the different data sets, they're not going to relate to each other. So I'm going to hit done. And there's my velocity. All right. And so I'm going to insert another graph. And it should recognize that I have this ready to go to insert. And so it looks like I've got some nice data to some extent here. Uh, remember, what am I looking for? If, this is, if I'm testing to see if this is constant acceleration, what should I be looking for here? Some of this data, I think, looks pretty nice. But then and for a while it doesn't and the question is why and, and that's something you'd, you'd want to be able to figure out and explain and and you can do that um, and if I stretch out this top graph here and if you look at it a little bit closer you might be able to see something interesting going on in this shape so let me let me just and you can do the same thing you can add in a, an acceleration graph you can just do another calculated column for acceleration then plot your acceleration versus time graph just remember our our Original data is position versus time data. When every time we do one of these mathematical manipulations, you know we're going to introduce some variation, some error into it, based on whatever derivative model they're using. And every time I take a second or third derivative, you're going to sort of fluctuate, get these 
exaggerated fluctuations in, in the data you're trying to create. So just be careful as you're trying to analyze that and don't take spikes too seriously. And you got to sort of think around them. Let's just do a, a quick uh, curve fit, a regression on this. And if this is free fall, we should have a second degree polynomial here. So I'm just going to click in the graph. I'm going to use this whole data set. I won't select a portion of it. I'll just use the whole thing. So I'll just leave it all blank here. But here's my regression. It's going to grab the whole set of data. I'm going to use a quadrant regression. Um, I won't use a time offset because I'm starting at zero. If I wasn't starting at zero, if I wanted to go like start in the middle here someplace, I'd use my time offset and it would automatically um, do a time shift over to zero it out for me. I'll go ahead and try the fit. And, and our fit has an R squared of about eight millimeters out of out of 80, that's that's a, that's a bit high. Um, that's about a 10% uh, average error on these things. So not a great fit here. And but I'm going to hit OK on this, and then I'm going to I'm going to stretch this data out so you can see our variation here. And as you can see. We're not coming down and, and hitting our origin very well here at all. In fact, our origin is going to is at negative uh, 1.2 centimeters, and so our origin is quite a way below um, what you're seeing here. In fact, let me see if I can adjust this a bit here. So you can see it it does hit below our origin here, and up. Up on uh, and it, and it's just not really following my data too well. Here I'm consistently above. Here I'm consistently below for a while. Here I'm consistently above again, and then I'm consistently going below. So it, it doesn't look like this is a great fit for this data, even though at first glance it looks sort of parabolic. This isn't very parabolic. Now, if I were to take a different subset of this data, I'll leave this model up here. So this model is not a great fit for the data. And you, if you look at this, remember, I got 8 millimeters out of about 80 here. It's about a 10% error overall, um, which, is, which is not a great fit. Um, let me select a smaller subset from here to here. And if I were to run this through a regression, I'm going to do the same type of regression. Stick with my quadratic. I'm going to try a fit. Um, now, now I'm only running. I'm running through a smaller set of data. I'm I'm running through. I don't know about. Uh, you know, roughly, uh, I'm up about 40 centimeters, about 40 millimeters total. And but I'm only having a variation of about 1.7 millimeters out of 40. So now my I'm I'm below 5% uh, on average error for my data. So this is this portion from here over to about here, to about 0.3 seconds seems to be a much better fit. So it looks like so if we if we hit OK on this, um, so you can see this fits this this portion of the curve. It'd be nice if I could color code these lines in Excel. I can do that. And this is you know the downside of this. You know this has some nice tools up here to do um, integrals for areas and then our regression. I can do the same thing in, in Excel, but I can have a lot more control over the look of it. Um, and I can do linear fits as well. They're, they're easy to do. Um, but I don't really have an easy integral tool. But otherwise, I think even though I can do this in, in Logger Pro, to tell you the truth, um, you have more control over the output, the final output in uh, Excel. And you can do your own little derivative function to get velocity by taking adjacent data points. Because you can just take your like these first two points here, there's your delta y over delta t to get a short secant to get a something that's very close to an instantaneous velocity and, and point by point you could create your own velocity versus time data. So yeah we can pull stuff into logger pro pretty easily but you know if Excel can do pretty much all the manipulations on the data just as easily plus I can color code my charts and see my values a lot easier yeah I'd probably uh, end up doing it in Excel rather than Logger Pro. But here's how you do it in Logger Pro and you can play with it. Um, if you let's look at our outcomes by the way, um, when we lose this whole data set, our free quote unquote free fall isn't even close to the 9.8. If you double this, um, what are you at 5.7 meters per second? On the shorter piece of the data, on the first portion of the data, it's better. It's at um, 3.7, double that, that's your you're about uh, 7.4 meters per second squared, which is closer to free fall. 
Um, but if you wanted to know what went wrong with this, you'd actually want to try replicating this experiment yourself. And if you played with it and, and literally felt what was happening in your hands, I think you'd probably figure out why this data is a little bit off. And I think you could change this experiment to get better data that fits. But at the far end, you may still see some flattening out that's happening up here. But that's something to explore as an ex a lab experiment. So have fun trying to do that.